Hey, it's the Smitty coming to you live from the Smitty Dome. Champions perspective. Special guest today, no other than uh, Al Scully from Hotlanta, Georgia. Al, come on in, buddy. Happy, happy to have you here. Happy to have you here. Thanks for having me. Um, we're hoping, uh, you know, Puffer's our uh, usual guy here, but he's in uh, Texas fighting a hurricane now. What do you think about that? I hope he doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> couldn't, have, couldn't have said it better myself, Helen. <laughs> Lost for words. Uh, let's get right to it, guys. Uh, on our special edition, uh, we're going to hit up Alan Scully's team of last year, which brought him to the playoffs. Is that correct, Dale? That is correct. A true statement here at the Smitty Dome. Oh, yeah, what is that thing? All right, Al, so uh, you know, I don't have your draft picks in, in front of me. Let, me. let me blow this guy up a little bit. Maybe it'll blow up. That's so much. Nah. Blow that shit up. Uh, oh, boy, this is a mess. Um, I know number one was what? DeAndre Hopkins? Is that what the – Oh, yeah, you are right. Yeah, DeAndre Hopkins was, was Al's number number one pick. Al, how'd that pick turn out for you? And it wasn't that good of a pick. I thought he was going to come in with some big points for me each week, and, and it, it ended up being kind of a bust, as some of the other guys would say. Uh, I thought I thought I was going to come in strong with him, and it just didn't work out for me. But yeah, everybody, a lot of people depended on DeAndre Hopkins for that first pick. I, I get that. Uh, let's look at the top of your lineup here. Uh, uh, Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck, number – Number three or four scoring overall last year for the quarterbacks. That was lucky for me because, I, honestly, I, I wanted to go back to uh, Aaron Rodgers because he was a big scorer for me in the previous year. Hmm. But uh, I don't remember who picked him up. Somebody else picked him up. And I was a little pissed off about that. Whoever got him, fuck you, because I wanted to get him. But I picked up Andrew Luck. Luckily, he uh, – he came in strong for me and got me some good nope. points this year. No pun intended. Uh, let's look at uh, your starting running backs. Isaiah Crowell, no Cleveland Browns. I mean, Jesus, nobody wants anybody from the Browns. But big, Isaiah Crowell was a was a, a gem. He was a, big, a diamond in the rough. Big scorer. Somebody, I think maybe Cole had him on it on their team the previous year, and I, I noticed that he was putting in some big numbers and. And that was somebody I wanted to keep an eye on coming into the draft of this previous season. And I said, well, you know what? Fuck it. If he's available, I'm going to, I'm going to squeeze him up and try and get him in my lineup so I could, so I could try and work those points. And I, I know I'm a newcomer to this league, but I, I want to, I want to be a contender. So that's why I, why I grabbed well, him. I, uh, I see Jonathan Stewart next, which I believe was a trade from Cole also. You know, just a filling spot for you. You know, you keep going down below that, and you're flexing about Mike Wallace. You know, this has to be, this has to be a roster that's showing, uh, you know, your your last ditch effort just to, you know, get past the next spot for the playoffs. Yeah, well, with with Stewart, I, I don't, I think with the trade with that, I think I had some injuries or something going on, and I. I needed to fill a spot, and I needed to get some guys in there that I was hoping that could that could score some points for me and something was going wrong in the season where, where I'm not a big, I'm not a big trade guy. Like some of these guys in the league. Did you just look at me? I, I did just look at you. You know, I'm, I'm looking through the running back points. I don't know. Jonathan Stewart's not even showing them in the top 30. But I, well, I was dependent on him yes. to give me some points. Yes. Yes, you were. I, mean, I was looking for something. He was – and you know you got short on the points for you. You got to look for those dark horses, and sometimes you know they come up good, and sometimes they come up bad. I, I agree. Sometimes with Cole's trades, it, it looks like he's offering you a diamond, but it turns out being a turd. Yeah, okay, it goes it goes that way that, quite a bit in this uh, league. That's true. Let's keep moving, Al. Al, you hit the uh, Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry, who was like a he was in top fifteen for scoring last year. Yes. He did well for me. He was good in the previous year as well. Um, Not only that, you drafted him also. 
I did. I did. I like to stick with my drafts. Mm -hmm. The guys that uh, performed in the previous years, I like to look at how they did in the past, injury wise. You know, I'm looking for guys that don't get injured all that often. Looking the guys that are consistent with their points, and uh, I'm I'm just looking for that good. I'm I'm one of the guys that looks for the good draft starting off. I'm not looking for the guys that looking that at I'm your going to trade. Looking at your draft round six, round six you pick Jarvis Landry. Mm-hmm. Seems like a steal. Seems like um, a steal for being a top fifteen guy. I like it. Yeah. So let's move down. You, you got Chris Hogan, and once again, this is—I mean, this is end of. I mean, this is this is the end of the season pick. I mean, Chris Hogan. Not a lot of people had him starting in their league. That's all I'm saying, Alan. You know, Patriots are a tough contender. You know, when you got Tom Brady as the quarterback, you don't know who he's going to throw to. Mm-hmm. He's got a lot of receivers out there that he he can he can pick up and and, and score points with, and it's just dependent on him on who he's going to pick up for that week of, you know, who's going to be the big scorer, and that's yeah. that's why I I believe the Patriots is a good a good team to go to for. For that lineup, and just, and just so happened, Chris Hogan was was not a recipient of any good balls while you had him. That's that's for sure. true. Well, for sure. let's hit your tight end spot at uh, Kobe Kobe Fleener. You know, at uh, you know, he get he moves out of the Colts spot and he comes down to the Saints. You know, uh, how did Kobe, Kobe Fleener do for you this year? Well, we all can't get Rob Gronkowski. Oh my exactly. God! Uh, isn't that the truth? You know, yeah. I'd, I'd love to have him, but yeah. you know, yeah. I don't. I don't make those trades like some other people do. Well, I mean, I mean, I, it, people that they I, I feel what you're pushing. I mean, I drafted him, and he was he was hurt for most of the season. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, he was hurt for yeah. most of the season. Yeah, but hopefully he'll have a good season this year. Uh, but good point. Good anyways, point. yeah. Anyways. I had a quite the roster of tight ends mm. there for a while, mm. looking for somebody to come up ahead. I didn't know who the fuck to pick. Speaking of speaking of, I I remember. Uh, Mid, mid to early season, uh, I fed you Gary Barnage, who was on a, on a wrecking ball, right? He was on a wrecking ball for like a couple of weeks. For Matt Jones. For Matt Jones, who yeah. doesn't even start for Redskins anymore? Yeah. Boy, yeah. you thought I poisoned you, but it turns out we both got poisoned. Yes. Yes, that was good on both ends. That was horrible. So let's move on. Look, Al, uh, the, the Broncos. Broncos defense, Justin Tucker as a kicker. Tucker always comes in well for me. I had him in the previous season. I'm picking him in this season. You know, yeah, I'm not even going to look at the kicker's points, but I'm pretty sure he was up there. Yeah, he, he, uh, he number one, number past two seasons. I'll tell you what he was. Whoa. He was fucking oh. number one the past two seasons. Good kicker, scored a lot of points. You know what, guys, if, if you uh, take anything away from this podcast, it's that Al will beat you in a kicker spot. I will. It's, fuck you. I mean, fucking kickers, where it's at. They're going to get you points, too. So, if you don't like my pick, go fuck yourself. Because that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to get the points. Hey, this is supposed to be a family-friendly podcast, Alan. Uh, is your family watching it? Well, tell them not to, because I'm going to swear. So, uh, <laughs> you know, so we got Randall Cobb. You know, not a bad pick. He must have been injured at the time, uh, being out of hell starting lineup. Todd Sharp. You know, he, uh, was he, I think it was a rookie this year. He was a rookie. One of the dark horses. I was banking on that. One of my later picks. I was hoping that, you know, I was hoping that I could see something out of him, which I didn't really see all that much out of him. I had which a lot it, of those. I had a lot of those. Which is a dice roll when you come into those later draft picks, as you all know. I mean, you don't know who you're going to pick, who's available. You know, you just got to kind of roll the dice there. And that's what I did with him. Keep going down. Jack Jack Doyle for tight end. Jack Doyle. He he put some points up on the board. I mean, there, I played him quite a bit. I you mean, know. enough to make your 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 last game, I guess. But uh, yeah, he put up some points. Gary Barnage showing up at the bottom of that. Yeah, I traded for him. Only we, problem. Oh, we already talked about. Only problem with that. that Gary Barnage is not on a team this year. Can you believe that, Ellen? I can't believe that. You know, he, as much of a scorer as he was, and. Big player. It's surprising that, you know, he would get dumped off like that. But, you know, with this season to come, we'll see. We don't know who who's going to be the big players and what's going to happen. And, you know, we're just going to have to do our research. And figure absolutely. Out absolutely. Oh, that's a great there. point. Um, Marcus Mariota on your on your bench. Right. I mean, you're, you're pushing Andrew Luck. 
top three in scoring for quarterbacks, Mariota on your bench. Maybe you could have traded him for somebody at some point. I, I could have. I could have. But you need that backup for when you, during your bye week. You need the you need the big player that will get in there and give you points when uh, when your number one guy is out. Right. You know. Well, yeah. You know, I I agree with you, but I, I think you could have. I think you could have moved Mariota for somebody else to help you out in a different spot. Maybe for a, a better running back or tight end, as the case may be. Yeah, I probably could have done that. But then what would I would have done when I came to a quarterback position? Then I would have been scrambling to find some shit bag in the huh? uh, free agency lineup that's not going to give me shit points. Huh? And I'm going to make up here or lose there. Oh, you're absolutely it right. Comes into the you're absolutely right. Game time, you know? You know, and then you're, it's, a, it's a scramble. So, Calvin Benjamin. Calvin Benjamin. Wait, what are you going to say about him? Uh, I mean, he took a dump last year. He was a big dump. Um, I'd like to see where that guy was drafted. Calvin, Calvin Benjamin, let's keep looking for him. He was late. Uh, shakes was a lot late. of puss. Shakes a lot of puss. So, yeah, at least took him after the 10th round. So, I mean, that, I mean that's fine with me. They're, you know, they're going to want to talk about him. He's losing weight this year. He's got Jerick McKinnon. Which uh, I think was in a part trade from me, you know. It just did a, a running back snafu, you know, situation normal, all fucked yeah, up. People and, are getting hurt. And the Vikings. That's, the, that's the, the dilemma when you come into this fantasy league. Fuckers getting hurt. And, and he, uh, he he runs it out with the Lions defense, who gave up I think the most points of all defenses. So, I mean, you know, I'm not sure why the Lions defense was on the team, but you know what happens. Right, man, it was Benz, it was right out. That's right. Sure. I was struggling there for a little bit. I don't, know. I don't understand why you got to rub it in. Oh, I, I apologize for that, Al. <laughs> hey, uh, you know, we did uh, we did a second episode. I think you caught that earlier today. Mm-hmm. Um, you're picking number two this year. Yes. You know, are, are you feeling warm and fuzzy about any picks coming up? Not, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Maybe, maybe Odell Beckham. I'm kind of happy that I'm number two. I number two? Give yeah. Me a, an option there to get who I want, when I want. Except for David Johnson, you can't. You you probably cannot have him. No, because I'm pretty clear that their number one is going to pick David Johnson right off the bat. So whoever wants to pick him, you can scratch that off your list mm. because that's clear. Uh, David Johnson not going anywhere besides number one, guys. If you're wondering, <laughs> just to let you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, anyways. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if it's going to be a running back or fucking wide receiver or a quarterback, but we'll see what's going to happen. Well, I uh, appreciate your time here, Al. Thanks for uh, coming to Ohio. No problem. Are we- Thanks for sharing a wealth of knowledge. We appreciate how you were looking at your team and how you were deciding to play them. Let's talk about your team a little bit. Oh, you do? Yeah, I want to well, talk about your team. Well, I Let's look, see. Let's look, see. Look, the, the sample only pushes so far, so I'm going to have to end this one, and we're going to start another one. Oh, okay. So I'm going to I'm going to send you guys off with the uh, third episode. God bless. Good luck, Buffer. Stay alive. Don't let the eye of the storm get you. Love that. Love that.